Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ngoc Hun. I'm a master's student in material science and engineering. I care deeply about the environment, as I know you do, too, because we all care about our health and all want to live in a clean and well-maintained environment. So I'm sure that you probably feel shocked and disturbed when reading news about plastic pollution. Beaches full of trash, sea turtle getting stuck in ghost nests, birds being killed, dead whale with hundreds pounds of plastic in their stomach. Many people look at this picture and feel rush of hatred toward plastic. They start, they choose to lead a plastic-free lifestyle and start spreading the message about how bad plastic for the environment. According to their narrative, plastic has become one of the most harmful materials to the environment and it, pol and it pollutes the ocean harms wildlife, builds up in landfills, and because it will stay there for a long, long time. Most of them believe that plastic products are the main culprit, and it would be ideal to eliminate non-essential usage of plastics. Being a student in material science and engineering, majoring in plastic, I am deeply concerned by their narratives and, by, and the way that many people are interpreting plastic pollution. It is undeniably one of our greatest current environmental problems that requires immediate action. But is it right to put the blame on plastic? And could we save the environment by aiming for a plastic-free world? Is it really harmful and shouldn't exist at all? Or what you, you know, what most people know about plastic is just the tip of the iceberg. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to explain to you why plastic-free lifestyle is a poor choice for those who care about the environment, and to tell you something that is very contrary to what you know about plastic. It does not only facilitate the modern world that we know today, but it is also the unsung hero on our side in the battle against climate change. As a person who study about materials and their relation to the environment, I saw a different picture than what the media trying to tell you, and which leads to a huge difference in my approach to plastic pollution. Where I did my research about what happens with a product when consumers are done using them, I found out that apart from five options, five scenarios that mentioned in textbook, namely landfill, combustion, recycle, re-engineer, and reuse, there are, in fact, several additional ways to dispose trash that have been the first choice for many people. Throwing them on the beaches, on the street, or anywhere convenient for them. Or in short, littering. I came across an article named Litter and Debris in Our Waterways, and I found there's, and, and there's a nice sentence. There is a behavior and a person behind every piece of debris we find in our waterways. We've been focusing way too much on plastic or what we throw out to the environment, but not on the question, should the trash end up there and who will take the responsibility for these misplaced debris? So I'm, I don't know why when people talk about plastic pollution, very few mention leering and how to tackle this, this bad behavior. It is wrong, in my opinion, that we put the blame on something for a circumstance that we human created. And I believe that a small change in perspective and our attitude to the problem might lead to a huge difference in the way we deal with it and ultimately our solution. For example, we know that industrial activities and transportation are responsible for air pollution, but we wouldn't close all factories and stop moving around, right? We try to enact stricter environmental policy to force companies to treat the pollutants properly before releasing them to the environment. We try to consider the best option to move around, either by public transport or by car. And if we have to use car, then we try to drive it better and more efficiently. Then why we are giving up on plastic and trying to boycott it, but not paying more efforts to fight our own bad behavior? 
why plastic-free lifestyle does bring more light to the problem of plastic pollution and make consumers more conscious about their daily life choices. They only show half the picture and thus can result in many negative side effects. First, it fails to, to inform consumer that no one is free from guilt and nothing is created without provoking a certain level of impact on the environment. Metal, glasses, and ceramics, for example, are produced by exploiting Earth's resources so that we can have machines, cars, electrical appliances, and mobile phones to you, and along the way damage the environment via soil erosion, vegetation clearance, and landslide. To produce paper, trees are cut down and a massive amount of chemicals are used. Same apply for fibers, bio-based, and biodegradable because agricultural activities are responsible for deforestation, soil degradation, leaching of pollutants, for example, pesticide and excessive nutrients to water bodies. Second, if a person doesn't know about this and is exposed to anti-plastic narratives, he or she is very likely to develop a certain extent of prejudice against plastic. But have you ever wondered If plastic is such a bad thing, why was it invented and why we're still using it today? This is a question from a six-year-old girl here in Finland, and here is my answer. Plastic, indeed, isn't such a bad thing. Plastic saves lives, gives us more options, do, does what other materials cannot do, and it is the unsung hero on our side in the battle against climate change. Its lightweight has enabled lighter vehicles and lighter products, which consume less fuel and release less emission during transportation, which benefits both us and the environment. Plastic materials are stronger, more shatter resistant, and give better protection during impact, thus increasing the safety for both passenger and goods. Plastic materials are cheap to make making various products more affordable and accessible for people with modest income. And do you know that plastic saves lives? For example, disposable plastic blood bags introduced in the 1950s as an alternative for glass blood bottles have made blood transfusion safer, reduce the risk of blood infection, and enable the separation of platelets the process that has saved many lives of leukemia and lymphoma patients since then. What about the little plastic wrap around your cookies and the plastic meat box that you buy in the supermarket? Behind them are a huge packaging industry. And with, adv with advanced technology to keep your food from perishing and extend their shelf life from hours or days to weeks and months. Plastic and other packaging materials are there to help reduce the amount of food waste by providing the protection against breakage, spoilage, and contamination. Do you know that food production is responsible for around one-fifth of total carbon footprint, and more than one-third of them all is produced just to be wasted in the end. Well-designed packaging ensures that the food is delivered to you safe and sound or fed to hungry people instead of ending up in the trash bin. Without them, this number would be much higher. Third, and this is the most important point I want to make, anti-plastic movement fails to enlighten the popular audience about their true responsibility because it implies that all we need to do is to switch from plastic to alternative materials and our responsibility is over. No, our responsibility does not end there. First, the switching from alternative, switching to alternative materials might entail additional carbon footprint, which will intensify car climate change, ocean acidification, and other environmental problems. Second, the buildup and degradation of these so-called biodegradable materials 
can emit greenhouse gases, cause oxygen depletion and deterioration of water quality, and ultimately kill aquatic animals. And this is what's going to happen if you litter biodegradable materials. So, no matter what materials you choose to use, what products you choose to consume, we need to use them wisely and dispose them properly. Each material is a blessing, so use them with grace, manners, and responsibility. Keep the environment in mind. Minimize the, the amount of waste that you generate and never, ever litter. Utopia for me is a clean and green earth where there is no weight and nothing ends up in landfills. Because each item at the end of their lifespan would be returned and become new resources. It's a place where all kinds of materials are appreciated. And we all understand that the problem lies in the way that we use and treat them. So I call for a stop in blaming plastic and a start in fixing our own mistakes. Fight bad behavior, not only ours, but others, and more effort in improving our waste management system. Unfortunately, in reality, the returning and recycling rate of plastic materials are still very low due to difficulty in collecting and, re and separating them. But we have one exception. I'm sure that you're all familiar with Panty system here in Finland. It is uh, some kind of de deposit return scheme where PET beverage bottles are collected and returned with very high rate. I call it a miracle because the returning rate sometimes can reach over 90%. But the problem is it, only limit, it is limited to only PET beverage bottles. I, I believe that if we can repeat this kind of miracle and expand it to more types of materials, especially plastic and packaging materials, we can improve the situation and create a utopia, a sustainable and circular economy for all kinds of materials. So to sum up, plastic-free lifestyle and a vision about plastic-free work can be misleading because they only show half a picture. Anti-plastic ideology fails to explain to people that plastic and packaging are there for a reason, to help us and to protect us. It also do doesn't explain and show people that no matter what materials we choose to use, we need to use them wisely and responsibly. And littering is unacceptable under all circumstances. So stop blaming plastic. We need to unite consumer, producer, and governments. We need to unite and create a better system to return and recycling, to develop a returning and recycling system for all kinds of materials. While waiting for such a system to be developed and implemented, here's what you could and should do. Lower your carbon footprint. Use your materials of choice wisely and responsibly and dispose them properly. Minimize the amount of waste in general from water, energy to food. And let's reduce the, our overconsumption and throwaway habit. And fight leering behavior to turn the tide of plastic pollution. If you care about the environment, here's the two books that I recommend. One will give you an overview about materials and their relation to the environment. And the other will give you some concept about carbon footprint of every daily life choice that you make. Thank you for your listening. I hope this speech is helpful to you. Goodbye.